Today I'm breaking into a vulnerable machine using Eternal Blue. The exploit that powers WannaCry and NotPetya. So I'll show you how hackers use it step by step and more importantly how to protect against it. So let's get to it. So what is SMB also known as Server Message Block? Well, SMB is the backbone of Windows file sharing because it allows computers to share files, access printers and communicate over a network. It's what makes collaboration easy, enabling businesses to work seamlessly across devices. But what makes things easy for users also makes things easy for hackers. And SMB isn't just powerful, it's everywhere. Offices, hospitals, home networks, and it runs quietly in the background, allowing devices to talk to each other. But it's this quiet presence that makes it dangerous. Therefore, if SMB is exposed, especially an outdated version, it becomes a ticking time bomb. In 2017, thousands of businesses, hospitals and government agencies around the world experienced something terrifying. Their files were encrypted, the systems locked and the demand was simple, pay the ransom or lose everything. Well guys, this was WannaCry, a global ransomware attack that spread like wildfire. It didn't need user interaction, it didn't rely on phishing, it used SMB as its delivery system. And within hours, uh, over 200,000 machines were infected. But WannaCry wasn't alone, NotPetya followed, causing over $10 billion in damages. In the common thread, well, guess what guys, SMB version 1. Hackers didn't need brute force and they didn't need stolen credentials, they just exploited a vulnerability that was already there. And you'd think that after WannaCry, the systems would be locked down, uh, that SMB would be secured and patched and forgotten as a threat. But default settings are deceptive. Because firewalls are in place, VPNs are running and everything looks safe. But security isn't about what's visible, it's about what's running in the background. And many people assume that their systems are protected just because they have security software. Therefore, they never check what's actually exposed and this is how these attacks keep happening. So, I wanted to see it for myself and I launched an Nmap scan against a vulnerable machine. Nmap gave me my first clue which was port 445 as you can see here and also Windows 7 and SMB. Now, I wanted to make sure that these uh, machine was running version 1 of our SMB because version 1 is the vulnerable one, the one that will allow us to exploit this machine. So to make sure that SMB was running version 1, I uh, ran the, the following command. nmap-script SMB protocols, the port and the IP address of our target's machine. So let's see. Okay, so not only the target's machine is running SMB version 1, but is running also SMB version 2. However, we are not interested in version 2, but on version 1. And this is because the version 1 is the dangerous one, as you can see here, because this version 1 has a lot of vulnerabilities. Now, when you have Windows 7 and SMB version 1, you can have a vulnerability called Eternal Blue, and you can search about this on Firefox, okay guys? Uh, so take a look of the vulnerabilities running on SMB version 1 so you can be aware of these vulnerabilities. Now let's move on. So what does SMB version 1 actually allows us to do? SMB version 1 is vulnerable because it trusts incoming connections without proper validation. So this means an attacker can send a crafted SMB packet that tricks the system into executing code remotely and without needing a username or password or any form of authentication. This is exactly what Eternal Blue does. It sends malicious data to SMB version 1, causes a buffer overflow and injects shellcode into memory. And once that happens, game over. Let's load our metasploit to try to exploit this vulnerability. 
So the eternal blue vulnerability, okay guys? So let's see. MSF console. Now let's search for the module that we want to use to exploit this vulnerability. So to search for that module, we just need to insert search, then eternal blue. And here we have a lot of modules, but we want uh, just one. And that one is this here. We want to exploit the Windows SMB service. Now this here is the patch of the vulnerabilities running on SMB version 1. And this is the vulnerability that we want to exploit. The eternal blue vulnerability. Okay guys? To use this module, we just need to use the following command. Set 0. Okay guys? So either you can use this. So copy and paste this here. Or you can use the number. So let's click enter. Sorry, it's not set, is use. Sorry, guys. Use zero. Like so. Now let's see our options. And by options, I mean our hosts, our ports, L hosts, and L ports. Now, our hosts uh, stands for remote hosts, which is our target machine. So here we will insert the IP address of our target's machine. So let's do it. Set our hosts and then the IP address of our target's machine. In my case is 10.10.10.40. We click enter. Now let's set our L host which stands for local hosts which is referent to our turn zero. Okay guys? So set then L host like so, and in my case is 10.10.14.18. Now, if you are not sure which is the, your IP address, the your 10.0 IP address, you can go to a new tab and run the following command. If config, like so. And you just need to copy this here, the 10.0, and paste it here, okay guys? You click enter. Now let's see our options once again to see if we did everything correctly. Our R host is 10, 10, 10, 40. My L host is 10, 10, 40, uh, 14, 18. You can see it here above, but if you don't see yours here, you can run the command that I just told you, okay guys? Now everything seems uh, correct, so let's run this exploit. So run, let's see. Okay, so a few seconds later, we are in, as you can see, Merterpreter is our reverse shell, okay guys? Now, if you run the command get you ID, you will see that we are not just any user, we are anti-authority system. And this means full control and the highest level of access in Windows. So, one misconfiguration one outdated service and the machine is ours. This is why SMB can't be ignored. If it's not needed, disable it. And if you need it and it's running, then make sure that you have the latest version. So to see if you have SMB version 1 enabled on, on your computer, you can run the command get dash SMB server configuration. Then here, let me see, okay, here you can see that I have SMB1 disabled and SMB2 enabled. Let me just tell you that SMB2 works along with SMB3, they complement each other. So if you use SMB, use version 2 and 3, not version 1. Now if you have version 1 enabled, then disabled using the following command. set dash SMB server configuration dash enable SMB1 protocol, then the variable false because we don't uh, want SMB version 1 enabled, we want it disabled, that's why we put fo uh, false, and then dash force. And you click enter and you will have your SMB version 1 disabled. So overall, to have a more secure computer, you should always update your system, 
see what parts you have open and close the parts because if you are not using them uh, they shouldn't be open and do like this if you are using a part then you open that part use it and then when you don't need it anymore you can close it and this is a good way to use and safe way to use these parts okay guys and this is it guys today we talked about what is eternal blue how to exploit it and how to defend against it if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already please consider subscribing to this channel for more content like this see you next time stay curious stay safe and keep hacking bye bye